Hey everyone, welcome to Oh Man, September 11th. Well, happy September 11th day. Uh, <laughs> um, anyway, jokes aside, we'll get started. It'll be, yeah, it's fun. We're, we're really just running full cylinders on getting layer out the door or not getting it out the door, but getting it started, um, which is super fun. We're also talking with a bunch of other people. Uh, we should be live, be deploying on Manta, mainnet over there this week. So they're launching. Uh, best of luck to Manta in their launch. And then you'll, uh, if you're planning on building on Manta, we'll be over there ASAP. So uh, keep watching for that. Uh, put out another deep dive today. Go give that one a watch. Uh, did it, it was basically like uh, UMA. Um, they're kind of friends of ours. They're another optimistic oracle, very similar structure to ours, but they they haven't really announced anything necessarily new over the past year, but they do run a bridge and our, their CEO and I just kind of talk about bridge and optimistic designs for 45 minutes. So if you want to go give it a watch, it's a fun time. Um, cool. And then another thing. So we also scheduled, uh, we, we can start passing out the link. If you're in the DC area, we're, we're doing a meetup, uh, September 28th. We got, uh, Stephen Pally, he's a very, I guess, famous in the Twitter crypto bubble, if you will, uh, sense of the word. And yeah, he'll be talking kind of state of regulations and stuff like that. We're doing our best just to get the DC community going again. Um, we really want, we're right here. How can we sort of be a, a force for good? And, you know, we're right here around all the regulators. So we should be talking to them. We should be. You know, the voice for the, the little crypto projects who can't necessarily afford to to go meet with congressmen and stuff like that. So anyway, uh, let's get started. Ryan, how's things going? Good. Um, still, I'm still in the Diva tip table thing. Uh, finding that fee recipients, um, those properties has just added a new can of worms. So I'm just digging in that, trying to make everything line up again. Um, should be ready to go in the next couple of days. Cool. Let me know if you want to hop on. We can. Sure. Uh, Owen, things good? Yeah, things are good. Uh, last week, it was nice to figure out, uh, just verifying that um, this in in inclusion uh, proof stuff worked. Um, and I'm going to be continuing uh, filling out our little spec for uh, what's needed in terms of like modules and stuff for a layer. Cool. Spuddy. Uh, turned on my microphone. Um, uh, I was, I've been working on learning Prometheus and Grafana for like go process monitoring. Uh, going to use it on geth first and set it up on geth and see how to do it maybe you know for a cosmos chain or something but uh last net last week i also ran witnet i started a witnet node uh it was really really fast and really easy, really really easy so great job witnet i guess i mean it was awesome uh i was not able to get wit tokens though uh i went to the otc and they were like you can't get any wit here unless you want like a million and i'm like i want like 10 bucks worth and they're like no so i was like okay i guess i won't get any wit tokens uh and now it's <laughs> so that's where i'm at with that are uh, you looking for mainnet with tokens or do, do they have a testnet at all uh i i started up a mainnet wit node okay. because because wit is so cheap and you just need like a thousand to run a node it would be like it's like 10 bucks worth of wit to uh -huh. have a node to that's that's enough with stake to be able to win every now and then mm -hmm. so uh, i was going to try that out yeah yeah for those of you that don't know what spuddy's doing he's going to be running like all, all of the competitors or like different cosmos chains and stuff like that and he's going to come back to us and show us the goods and bads of kind of each one so we can like, i know a lot of us can just run you know you can hand it to GitHub and you can go try and spin it up. But um, seeing how other people do it will, will definitely be helpful as far as setting up 
what should the UX of color layer look like for a reporter, a validator, like that? Um, and, and at least, and at least we know not not necessarily if we're going to reinvent the wheel, but what what are people expecting? You know, are they expecting you know a binary, a Docker container, a point and click interface? <laughs> what are, what are people dealing with here? So. Uh, yeah, so the the other one I've done so far is band, and band was like, you gotta set everything up from scratch. They, it's not, nothing is automatic, and Witnet was like the opposite of that. It was like you want to run a node, we already got it all set up for you. You just start it up. You can change the config later, and I, I like that. I like that model a lot more <laughs> than like band, which is like you have to know everything about how band works up front to be able to set everything the way you want it before you start up your node. <laughs> It was like way harder. Nice. We're going for like plain text, text document of just like 30 <laughs> commands, like with like a small <laughs> comment for like each one in there. Yes. Yeah. I mean, if it was, it, yeah. Every, all, every project has like the, uh, like an operating system environment that they expect the, like the, the, the people running this stuff to be using also. Uh, and if you pick, if you pick one that's different from the one that wrote the guide, the steps are different, you know. So, well, Go modules are relatively easy. So we we did this with the old Telet reporters. Like, there are basically Go packages you can that make binaries for each system. So like we, you know, we had a Windows binary, a Mac binary, and a, a different different ones. So it's generally not the most difficult thing, but I know it can be tricky sometimes yeah there's, there's differences in between linux uh distributions even if they look exactly the same too yep well that just means we have to document everything from the beginning which is great it's great to yeah know. we yep we will so all right uh tim uh yeah i'm picking up this week with with uh, researching the state of bridging, um, and so like token bridging, and then and then generic data bridging. Um, so we have some designs in mind <clears throat> so far, but then I'm researching to see if there's anything else better out there. Nice, cool. Um... And then last but not least, uh, our very own CEO was out in, she is currently, I think, still out in DAPCON representing Tellerwell. How is it, Brenda? Hey guys, so I, it's, it's been great. Uh, so to give some background, I got here on Friday morning for funding the commons where I went and um, basically did two round tables on Different things, but just basically focusing more on the CPI um, project that we're going to be creating. And it was super interesting to find out, like, just people's perspective and also just figure out what everybody's talking about. I feel like proof of identity has taken, I don't know, it's a lot of people talking about that here and trying not to do it with, um, you know, scanning your iris and stuff like that. But... Aside from that, it, it was really great. There's a lot of really, really smart people here. Got a, a lot of feedback. Um, I you know I have a lot to work on still. And so that was basically my Friday and my Saturday. And then today I am at DAPCON where I did a presentation for best, pra best practices for Oracle implementations, where I try to give everybody like a comprehensive sort of guide um, for implementing an Oracle and thinking about it more holistic, more, more, yeah, holistically or like in a broader picture than just the Oracle, you know, trying to focus and making sure that people realize there's different aspects of their security that can be affected by it, starting with how they define their data, how they choose their Oracle and how they choose to implement it within their protocol and then any backstops that they may have to also include within their protocol in case there is anything goes goes wrong and that was my that was my morning it was well received and i'm just happy to be here there's a lot of people building it's actually it turned out really good i thought i wasn't sure what to expect because there's also permissionless going on 
there's um, Token 2049 going on in Singapore and a lot of people seem to, at least from Paris, seem like everybody was going to go over there, but it actually turned out to be a really great crowd. Thanks. Yeah. Are you are you at full node or is it near there? So I'm here. Oh, nice. Um, I'm at the liquidity pool. I don't know if you guys can see, but that's sort of like a pool. It's an actual it. pool. It's not. It's um. <laughs> it's a digital digital liquidity pool, so we can't jump in there. But it is really warm, surprisingly warm for. Well, I don't know. I've only been in Germany, like March through May. And it was always pretty cold. It's actually super warm. It's full summer here. I love it. But nice. yeah. All right. Well, yeah, there you go. So I'm sure we will be posting those speeches. Uh, probably. Right. So it was streamed this morning, but I don't think they have posted the recording. But I think at some point for DAPCON, for sure, they, they are streaming it for. Um, Funding the Commons, I don't think it was recorded. It was a much smaller conference. So I don't think those were recorded, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. Super cool. Thanks, Brenda. All right, on to questions. How are we doing? <clears throat> uh, yeah, so we'll start with Mayumos is asking, how many reporters do we theoretically need to bring all assets and data on chain via Teller layer, how much would they have to stake each? So Teller layer is different than um, kind of current Teller, how like if you stake, then your stake is locked up um, and, and you can't report for another 12 hours for anything. Uh, teller layer, you, you stake and then you can just report for whatever you want. And, and it's more about just hopefully we get more and more people staking and everyone's reporting on every value or they don't have to, but everyone's reporting on more values versus just one person, one value. Um, so it's, it's a little bit different of a framing. So, I mean, in that way, like you could have one guy with $5 worth of TRB. If he's the only staker, he, he can report for every value in existence. It, that doesn't mean it's secure in any way, but um, we're sort of moving this way so we can have a lot more bandwidth. Um, that's not necessarily that one stake, one report mentality. So. Cool. Um, Crypto Megawatts is new here and has an important question. Um, <clears throat> assuming a reporter staked 1500 TRB, which is held in lock state to become a reporter, and along the line of reporting, he eventually reported a wrong answer that got disputed um, and confirmed after the two days voting. Is he going to lose all of his 1500 TRB or a fraction or just the reward that he was meant to gain from the reporting? Yeah, so the, this one kind of, I answered this one, it goes kind of right off the last question, but the way Teller currently works is for every one value, you have one stake tied to it. So if you report, you know, right now on mainnet, it's 100 TRB, that 100 TRB is locked with that report. So if, if that report gets disputed, you lose that 100. You don't necessarily lose your other 1400. Um, if all you have is 100, then yeah, it's, it's all your tokens, but it's just one stake per value reported. Cool. Uh, and then Crypto Scholar was asking if there's a, if we could set up a new channel for Teller Layer uh, to ask specific questions without having to wait for the for the call. And good news for you, we actually just set up a new channel in the Teller Discord for Teller Layer. So any questions you want to ask specifically about that, feel free to pop them in there and we'll ask, or we'll, and we'll answer them. Um, Slick Mick is asking i've seen a video on youtube the channel is token terminal he interviewed one of the devs from maker dow he's slamming all other oracles that exist and is and has decided to launch their own oracle called chronicle he isn't very convincing and they didn't uh, <laughs> dive too deep on how it solved the trilemma um have you guys seen it uh thoughts on the competition 
can we get this token terminal guy to interview Nick next? Uh, yeah, I mean, on the whether he'll interview me or not, usually these are paid. I, I don't know. Um, or, or they're like tied with a sponsorship to some event. Um, we can always ask. Maybe he's, he's in good faith and he'll just he's taking taking great projects. Um, Alternatively, Nick, could you do a deep dive? On Chronicle? The answer? Yeah. I've asked him. So, like, the, the guy okay. who runs Chronicle, like, I know the guy. Like, I'm Is that friend. Nick? Like, yeah, it's Nick. Um, so okay. I've, I've spoken with him many, many times, and and there could be know. only one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah him down. There could be. Well, only he, one. he he's Nick with no C N I K, uh, but oh. it, yeah, it's it's different. Um, but no, he's super cool. He's been he was a maker for a long time. Um, the way that the way that Chronicle works is the exact same way that. Maker's Oracle currently works now. They have a whitelisted set of, I believe it's 17 parties. The, the number is actually not necessarily that important, uh, but they're like trusted parties in the space. So it'll be like a maker has one, DYDX has one, I think, uh, you know, maybe Gnosis or some some of these other projects that are, they're like well-known people in this, well-known other projects in the space and they all get to run a node and each of them reports the price and that's your oracle and the idea is that it's generally more of this they have reputation at back and, and then you can report the prices and it's it's a different model than teller <laughs> that's if, if you can't tell why uh go watch some deep dives but yeah it's 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 a fundamentally different model different trust assumptions than we're going for um but if if you're fine with those trust assumptions it's They've been running for a while and then they kind of work. So cool. That's it. All right. Well, yeah. yeah. It was suggested that we go over the teller layer questions also, but I don't, I don't, let me look at those real quick. Uh, Chewy asked about is it really going to be three seconds finalizations? Oh. Three seconds. Yeah. Should I? Should, I, I mean, we, we we don't necessarily need to. We haven't picked a block time yet, but it will be sometime in that range. So. Uh, Mu is asked here when deep dive. It's like, I don't know if he's talking about your deep dives or not. Yeah, I have to do a deep dive on Teller Layer. I, I need a guest host. So I'll have to. Hmm. I had Sasha do it last time. Maybe she can do it again. But if, if you have any other ideas or people. The system should be designed to accommodate both EVM and non-EVM chains. So could Teller be used on Solana? Yeah. Sure. Uh, and then lastly... I mean, yes, that's actually the goal, right? That we will be more compatible and easier, so... Yeah. And the last one reads more like a statement than a question. I'm not sure what the question is, so I'm going to skip that one. Cool. No, but exciting stuff. So it's it's coming along, and from the feedback we've gotten so far, releasing the paper has been all generally really positive, and you know, nobody's had any major critiques of it. So we're doing we're doing something a little bit right. So it's great. Um, anyway, thanks everyone. Talk to you next week. <laughs>